Do you like having infinite weapons? Because Phantom Forces has that. It's got a lot. But naturally, some things are going to be better than others, and it entirely comes down to your opinion or playstyle or just what looks the goofiest. But after my years of playing this game, what I enjoy using changes all the time to keep things fresh, and so I figured that I'd go ahead and show you guys what I like to currently use in 2023 and what's gotten me to have the most fun lately. Make sure to stick through the video because a lot of these things you might find kind of weird. Anyway, enjoy. And I think that I'll start off pretty basic here with something that I've actually not really talked about in the past because I've never been too interested in it, that being the AUG A3. I'm using this amalgamation of attachments on it that, you know, arguably you could probably pick better stuff. But basically, personally for me, those attachments are like literally all that I need. Now, if you know anything about the AUGs and Phantom Forces, you'll know that they kind of have a bit of a reputation to be a bit of a laser beam. And um, yeah, that's kind of no secret here either. Huh? I thought that was a teammate. I was like, why are you shooting at me, bro? I'm honestly surprised at the fact that they haven't lowered the recoil, or not lower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised at the fact that they haven't raised the recoil, considering how long this has been an absolute laser beam of a weapon. It's got your pretty typical, or sometimes less typical, three shot up close ability, all the way up to 40 studs, and five shot at range, which is basically standard. So like, you're not getting anything crazy fast, but you know, you point, you click, you get a kill. It's it's that simple. And that's what I like about it, because I'm a fairly casual player, and it provides a nice casual play style just for me. Now, if we move completely to the other end of the spectrum here, I also really, really like the M16A1. I personally use these attachments right here. They're kind of what works best for me, and I know that hollow point is a bit of a controversial conversion to use on basically anything, but it gives you like 36 or like 37 damage up close. Not to mention the obscene like 1000 RPM fire rate for this. Who needs... Who needs accuracy whenever you got all that fire rate? I can't think of a single person. This is a bit of a harder one to recommend because it completely depends on playstyle. I mean, this thing is just completely wild to actually try and use. But if used correctly, which is hold left click and wildly spray everywhere, then honestly, you've got yourself a pretty good time here. It's honestly really good. I have made a video on it before. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link at the end of the video. Totally worth the watch, I'd say. With SMGs, for me, honestly, it's a bit more the same as the M16A1 in terms of having an obscene fire rate, crazy high damage, and using hollow point. And, of course, these other lovely, beautiful attachments right here. I saw a name. I Someone's there. I saw a name. <laughs> oh, and everyone's dying. Do I dare peek it? No, nobody's there anymore. This is going to be another gun that I think is, like, super, super situational. Just because of the fact that, like, you really need to be up close. <laughs> Specifically for the K7 with hollow point. <sighs> and, of course, be a little bit more accurate. <laughs> so that the level 4 with the intervention doesn't kill you. One of the other reasons you need to be super up close is, uh, 13 minimum damage. So, personally, I like to stick to maps like Metro and Bazaar. Dude, what is going on with all these freaking explosions? What is that? But this is like, it's it's like your average toxic Metro player's, I guess, nightmare or fever dream or something. Literally, all that you have to do is pre-fire every single set of stairs that you come in contact with and you'll find somebody. Or just use your mini-map and get a nice sick kill right there and then die immediately. <gasps> no, I've been out K7'd by my own K7. How could this be? Ooh, can't be using that yet. That's a sneak peek for later. Stick around, by the way, because it's about to get a little bit crazy with uh, <laughs> some of the things that I like to use. Whoa, no, a little bit too long range for me. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've done it now. Still in the scout category, but moving over to carbine now. <laughs> I, I really like the K1A. The K1A is, once again, another, like, super fast-paced, low-recoil type of weapon that can potentially have really good damage if you wanted to. But personally, I like to rock 223 on this just for the little bit less recoil. I really, really like hollow point, but I feel like on this particular weapon, it just doesn't really have too much of a purpose. I mean, ugh, god dang it, bro. Oh, I was gonna get so many kills right there. I saw so many people. What are you looking at? Oh my god, what am I aiming at? What am I aiming at? I'll get him. There we go. Well, I burned all my ammo on that one man. And somehow didn't kill that second one. I don't understand. Oh, that's why. Who needs low ping? Who needs it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's completely on me. Don't blame the gun for that. Weird choice of attachments though, my guy. What the heck? But if you're really talking about range viability, the next gun is going to be for you. Ah, uh, yeah, I... <laughs> It turns out I really like the Remington 700. Or sorry, the Model 700. Specifically with these attachments right here, because honestly for me, uh, I, I just can't get enough of the 32 ACP conversion. And I shot, I shot behind this guy! What am I doing? So if you don't know, the 32 ACP conversion is basically a miniature version of the Steyr Scout. And if you don't know what the Steyr Scout is, it is basically a sniper that does no damage unless you headshot. So in this particular case, we're talking it does 35 damage up close, which is, you know, three shot with a sniper is pretty bad, let alone a bolt action sniper. But it has a 10 times headshot multiplier, so you're talking 350 headshot damage up close and just about 200 at range. Now, of course, the downside for this is that it has insane drop-off. If I aim right at that crevice, you can see, just from that little distance, it already dropped off pretty hard, and it gets much, much worse at range. But it's just so satisfying getting these headshot kills, dude. 
Oh my God. I can't even express it. If you ever played Black Ops 2 back in the day, dude, it's literally like using the ballista. Now, of course, for me, I have to run this with the, I think it's called the marksman kit, which basically allows you to, uh, what's it called? What's it called? You don't have to zoom in whenever you fire. So if I shoot, you can see I don't actually have to zoom out in order to cock the gun. Whereas if I take it off, which, yep, there we go. You'll see it doesn't reload and I have to actually zoom out in order to reload the weapon after each, which on something that fires this fast just kind of isn't really something that makes sense. Because yes, the 32 ACP conversion does just about double your fire rate. So it allows you to stay zoomed in and just spam left click or just die instantly to a level 80. Who's using the AUG A3 para? Very cool. Okay. All right. I'm going to run away from that now. And I'm going to just chuck that grenade there and keep running because I saw him coming down the stairs. I'm not particularly good at getting headshot kills, as you can kind of see there. But whenever you do land them, though, it's... I, I don't even know how to explain it, dude. <laughs> that man popped in the air. Let's go. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily my favorite sniper, nor would I say it's nearly the best. It's just something that I've had the most fun with recently while trying out, like, a bit more of a faster playstyle. Whoa, where did you come from? Get out of here, my guy. I actually don't know what the kill requirement on this is. I'll have to check that out here in a second. Well, you know, thanks to this guy, I can check it out now. Oh, thank God. It requires 250 kills, which isn't too, too bad. I think especially the credit cost on that's going to be pretty low. But yeah, overall, just a fun little way to use the sniper, I guess. Now, one of the secondaries that I've actually been having a ton of fun using recently is the GIM-1. What is that man doing? Well, if you don't know, this was added, like, I don't know, several, several months ago. It's one of the newer pistols in the game, though. And if you look at it on the surface, it looks just like a slightly modernized 1911. And that's basically what it is. Except it has insanely high damage. And it basically allows you to two-tap up to, uh, I don't know how many studs, but quite a few. And one of my personal favorite things about it is that you can three-tap at all ranges. So I guess technically speaking, if we go ahead and put on a long barrel and a uh, delta sight, if we can get someone to stay still just long enough, I should be able to snipe them with this. No. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm aiming at there. Hopefully something. Now there is actually one that I didn't think I would use, which if you can tell what it is under the skin here, it is the advanced coil gun. But if you use these particular attachments right here, you're going to have yourself a fantastic time or the worst time in the world, uh, either one. Now there is actually a reason for that, one of which you can kind of see at the bottom of the screen there, because this is one of those guns that has like insanely high highs. Like you can do insanely good close-up damage like that. Or you could do uh, things like that where you hit him a million times and it doesn't kill them. And that is because this has one of the highest damage gaps out of like any gun in the game, because you can either do 33.6 damage, which is a guaranteed three shot up to tw 20 studs, bro, what? I didn't even know it was that low. Or you could do six damage out to 70 studs. Also with the particular attachments that I've chosen as well, it makes this thing, obviously, as you can see here, fully automatic firing at, I believe, about 1,200 rounds a minute. Uh, yep, 1,200 rounds a minute. I will say that regarding this, if I remember correctly, it is insanely expensive to actually build this particular gun. Uh, and I don't know that it's entirely worth it, but after getting these attachments for it, though, I, I do feel like I've had a lot more fun with it than, uh, than I thought that I would, like, ever. And it is kind of funny whenever people just sit there and eat a bunch of lead. Or, I guess, metal discs, because this thing doesn't fire bullets. No, no, no. It, it basically fires nerf discs out of that, uh, I hesitate to call barrel. I'll say as far as nades go, this is going to be a little bit subjective and once again kind of based on playstyle. However, I think, arguably, if you're not somebody who really likes to use grenades or really bothers, the Semtex is going to be the perfect thing to equip. For one, it's unlocked at rank funny number. And two, as long as your enemy has headphones, they'll be able to hear a very distinct beeping sound. And that's actually going to allow you to use this in two different ways here. And the Semtex, I feel like, is going to be a nice balance between having a proper utility and having something that'll actually be able to psych your enemy out. Semtexes can actually help you in two different ways. So for one, let's say that this hallway here, this is one of the most popular hallways in this entire map. And let's say there's a bunch of dudes coming down this hallway, and I don't feel like I'll be able to fight them. They're going to pre-fire me. I'm a little bit scared. If I don't want them to come down this hallway, all that I have to do is this. They're not going to push that grenade. Because if they do, that means that whenever they get in, they're going to have to hope that they fight me off and live long enough to not have that nade go off in their face. But what it'll also do is if, especially if I put it like right here and I know they're going to push me, if someone doesn't have their headphones and they come in this room, all that I have to do is hide and then it will go off right on them. And you'd be surprised the number of people who just don't hear the beeping sound. So I feel that this is a grenade that's a little bit better to be used in a sneaky manner, which is a little bit counterintuitive to the thing, you know, beeping and all, which is why I would say maybe just like chucking it across the map isn't super viable. They're going to see the grenade going through the air. It's going to get stuck to the floor and not roll. People are going to see that blinking light. It's just not going to be a good time. But if someone's charging at you and you want to just like chuck that thing right here, that's it. 
you've won. You've won the fight. Because even if they come in the room and kill you, the nade's going to go off on them. And lastly, a category that isn't super, super important, but still is worth talking about because I know people are going to ask, is the melee category. Now, melees to me aren't super, super important in my view to actual gameplay. And I feel like they're mostly just kind of like an aesthetic thing to wave around. However, pretty though they may be, it doesn't mean that they're entirely useless. Now, of course, I got to show you a couple of my favorites here. <laughs> The pan. I like the pan. I feel like it's a silly little melee. And then whenever you hit stuff, it makes the silly TF2 pan noise and it makes me happy. We've also got things like the Karambit, which it's pretty hard to go wrong with the Karambit. I think that they're a little bit overrated, but I think pretty cool nonetheless. You also have things like the Commando, which I have a customizable one here, as you can see, and I think it looks fantastic. The Bellow Song, more commonly known as the Butterfly Knife, I think is also a fantastic melee. If for no other reason, then it just looks super cool, nice and flashy, and I've also had a ton of fun with it too. I made a video actually on this particular melee and I had a pretty good time with it. And right here, the Hrunting, if I'm saying that correctly, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but either way, this is definitely one of the better looking melees in the game, if for no other reason than it has really sick, really sick ah uh, particles, bruh. I mean, look at this, it just looks super cool. There's a ton of other super cool melees though, namely the Linked Sword is one of my favorites as well. But at the end of the day, the melees are just kind of your choice and, uh, you know, yeah, pick what you like. Now, I'm not saying that you have to like any of these, I'm not saying that you have to use any of these, I'm just saying that these are my personal favorites that I've been using so far at the tail end of 2022, start of 2023. Obviously, I've been making Phantom Forces videos for a while, so my taste and stuff is gonna change pretty drastically. But yeah, I mean, if you're kind of bored of the game or looking for some new stuff to try out and you haven't used some of the stuff on this list here, I mean, hey, give it a try. That's pretty much all that I can say about that. Uh, yeah, these are like some of my favorites that I've been using recently, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to subscribe, turn on channel notifications to get notified of all new stuff. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my others. I have a playlist up on screen of all my other Phantom Forces videos, which you can go check out there. No doubt to provide endless hours of entertainment and to keep those little neurons in your head spinning, or whatever neurons do. Subscribe. Oh. Oh my god, well...